Alpec is a niche platform building a network for women across the board, specifically those working in STEAM, traditionally expanded to be science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. We have gone for a slightly skewed arrangement with the acronym tagging ourselves as a repository of women in teams. We envision ourselves as co-opting an outreach or let's say an arm that tackles, trains, connects, grows and contributes in some small way to the efforts to enhance skills for women in different areas of work. This applies to women in Pakistan and the Pakistani diaspora wherever possible around the world. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to our live sprints. My name is Beem Saleh Iqbal and today we're going to be uh, talking to an amazing um, uh, uh, Shiro uh, like every week. Before we go on and start with our conversation today, I would like to uh, talk a little about Shri Swari Live Sprints for all our new members. This is a small effort that Eltec is making uh, sort of to redefine female heroes in Pakistan. The idea is to bring um, strong women, bring women who are approachable, who are relatable, who have had very similar struggles in lives like ours, to talk to them, to understand their lives, to understand what they're doing in their respective careers, sort of, in a way ke, um, we get motivated, we get inspired with them uh, by them, and we understand their struggles and relate to them, and in order to become better versions of ourselves. So last week we had Yamna Zia, she spoke about, she was, she's a senior brand manager at Nivea Canada. She spoke about her experience with Nivea in Dubai, uh, in Canada, and, and her experience and uh, working experience in Pakistan as well. So uh, she also shared a lot of tips um, to, you know, organizational tips, how to become more um, proactive with your work. And there was, it was a lovely conversation we had last week. And I'm, I'm really hopeful and really excited about today's session as well. Today we have Faika Gauri. She is the founder of Crack That Code. And she, we're going to be listening to her story today and hearing all about what she, the amazing work she's been doing. Assalamu alaikum, Faika. How are you? Welcome, Slavia Masal. I just want to thank you for having me here and giving me an opportunity to share my story. And I hope it helps some women who want to get to this. Definitely. The pleasure is all ours. So, Faika, please tell us about your journey right from the beginning. Okay. So, honestly, my uh, dad was actually in this industry. He was uh, first a, com a computer consultant in Australia. And then he came to uh, Lahore and he started his own IT company. So I've basically seen him struggle. Uh, the first time he made me a software program, I was four years old. So he put me in front of a computer when I was four years old playing these games. So it was always in my head that I might want to follow his footsteps, but I did not confine me in myself in that. So when I went to LUMS, uh, I actually went undecided. I was like, okay, I'll consider computer science, but let's see what the options are. But uh, the second I did the first one-on-one class, and then the next one, it's something just clicked. Uh, and uh, I just knew that was my calling, and I loved it. Uh, I loved uh, the whole challenge that came with solving a problem and making something work, and know that I made something from scratch. I did this. I made this. That got me really excited. Um, after I graduated, um, I took a break. Uh, I, moved, I did work in Lahore for a bit. Then I got married and moved to Karachi and then did a job here. But however, uh, that did not last long because I ended up pregnant. And the pregnancy was really bad. I was nauseous. I could not move. I wasn't eating. It was so bad, I had to quit my job. Uh, and they did offer to let me work from home at that time. But at that point, it was a turning point for me, Jane, that I did not want to work those long hours with the children by my side. And I just couldn't find that satisfaction in that at that point in my life. So I ended up taking a five year break. And I would like to say that um, uh, I was lucky enough to be able to do that. I know a lot of women cannot just quit jobs, but I could and I'm, I'm lucky that I could and I could stay home at that point in my life. Uh, then uh, Somewhere down the line, I started, there was a difficult time coming in my life and I started feeling really, really lost. Uh, and I just needed to get something back into my life, work, get something going again. And then ended up changing my field altogether. Uh, about three years ago, I started a training program to come become a psychotherapist. And when you see that, you might think, what does that have to do with coding or the coding classes that I do? But honestly, if I hadn't done that, if I hadn't started that, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have been able to do this. 
not only did that help me explore myself and to be able to realize what my passions were, but it also helped me in this uh, uh, the career path I picked for myself. Um, it, uh, it combined my passion for coding and my passion for child development. I was able to find this niche that I did, and that is basically the start of Crack That Code. And it's been two years now, and slowly, steadily, I'm working on building this. That is lovely. And like we were speaking before we went live, you know, post COVID or during COVID, you know, this is this is something that is so amazing that you're doing because you know it gives so many more people the opportunity to do it because you know classes are online, it's accessible, it gives something for children to do as well. Yeah. So um, when you were setting up Crack That Code, did you face any hurdles, any challenges during that period? I honestly, the hurdle is still coming up uh, for me. Yeah. Uh, my mission when I started this is not just to teach kids how to code, but to instill a programmer's way of thinking, I call it. Because you're not just learning the languages, you're also learning to deal with the problems that are coming up, uh, finding solutions, thinking out of the box. You are learning to be resilient because honestly, there's been times I've been staring at the screen for days on end because there's a bug. And if I gave up, I would not find the solution. So that is, all these things combined is part of the learning. But what I'm experiencing is parents just see coding as that technical skill that they're learning and, or just an after school activity. So what I'm trying to do now and still in process is to bring awareness that there's a lot more depth in the learning when it comes to coding. It's not just the languages and the syntax, yes, so then it will work. You have to learn the whole package. Right. I know that's, that's very relevant that, you know, you're changing the way a child thinks as well. So, yeah. so you said that, you know, you did the course in psychotherapy and then you realized that, you know, coding is your true calling. So was there anything that happened or any particular reason why you were like, no, I want to go back to coding and that is what I want to pursue? Uh, honestly, it was just acknowledging that that part still exists. I don't want to ignore that part. I am still a coder at heart. I am still, I still think that way. Yes, as a psychotherapist, I'm working on the emotional end side of myself. But that doesn't mean I have to ignore the other part. So basically acknowledging that I'm a whole and my whole is the practical and the emotional side. And hence decided to create a curriculum that works both ends and actually help shape the generation at the same time. Yeah, and that's really uh, it, it, the reason I also brought up this question was that most times, and this is also adding to some, a conversation that we're currently having on our Facebook group as well, is that, you know, most times we don't really understand what it is that we should be focusing our energies on. Like, you know, we have many career paths sometimes open to us or we're at that stage of life where we need to make a decision and we don't really understand what it is. That we want to do so like you said you know it's just really important to identify what i am good at and what i what is it that i want to do and alhamdulillah you found something that something that you know really resonates with what you've been wanting to do so you spoke about taking a break when you had children right yes. um when you did get back to work and you, know, you did get back to crack you know you start to crack that code how did you manage your work-life balance in the beginning uh, when you were setting it up and now um honestly i think there's three few four things that came up for me when i was thinking about this question uh, number one is um uh, understanding and recognizing that i picked a field or a niche where i can't set the timings according to my own needs and my home life uh, my classes are scheduled so it doesn't take me away from what i need to do at home uh secondly and i think this is the biggest one it was figuring out my priorities my priorities are that my house, my kids, my family, everybody's happy, healthy, and loved, and there are my children's upbringing is done. So it's okay if my house is not perfect. If the house is messy, that's fine, because I'm taking out that time to make sure I'm happy as well. If I'm trying to do it all, I'm just gonna go nuts myself. So it's about figuring out my priorities, and that makes it easier for me to be able to find that balance. And secondly, uh, thirdly, actually, is the fact that the village I have, um, my in-laws, my husband, and including my friends. The seconds notice, I have a meeting coming up, take my kids now, right now, or can you pick up my kids? Can you do this? Uh, I've had so much help 
in this regard. And honestly, I would not be able to do it without those supporting me. Yeah, absolutely. And this is, uh, this is a theme that has come up in every Shichwari live sprint that we've done, that you know, it is really the support that we, that's behind us in everything that we're doing. Alhamdulillah that we're blessed to have that, that village who is, Definitely. you know, up. Uh, so now let's get to Crack That Code. Uh, please tell us everything about Crack That Code and what you're doing and how children can, you know, parents can sign up their children. Uh, sign up so you can get done by going onto my page or my WhatsApp and then I'll let you know when the classes are starting. I actually have a new batch starting next week for uh, uh, Scratch and Python. So if any parents who are watching are interested, they can know that this class is starting. But uh, for the last two years, I've been working on creating a strong foundational course so the kids can learn the basics of coding. Uh, I do that mainly on scratch programming, which is basically a pick and draw, which allows them to not focus on learning the syntax and languages, but just, OK, this is what this block, this does that. So it's a lot easier. So when I do that, it allows me to focus on learning the basic concepts. They will learn what variables are. They will learn what, how to use if and then statements and loops and everything that comes in between. Uh, so once they learn the concepts, honestly, if you look at languages, they all use these concepts. They're all the same. They all have these if then statements. They all have all these loops. They have this. So once you learn how to use it and you create, learn to create an algorithm with it on scratch, you can then use that and learn another language and then move on to written code. So the kids who come to me on Scratch, when they learn the basics, um, I just started a new Python class uh, a few days ago. And those kids have been with me for like two or three sessions. And honestly, I did not really need to teach them that much. It was new language, but they could figure it out. And I did not have to help them. It made me so proud that they've understood the concept so well that when I explain it to them in a new language, they're like, oh yeah, I understand this. I know how to do this. Uh, so it's all about creating that foundation. And I use a really easy scratch, which allows me. Uh, that is my focus. Secondly, once they've learned the concept, uh, I make them test it out. I allow them to create their own project. So, okay, what game do you want to make? What animation do you want to make? And now you figure out you need to own how to make it. What are the functions that are going to be needed for it? Uh, how's that going to work? Is bit by bit. So they learned hands on and how to make their own algorithms and their own programs instead of me telling them exactly. Because in level one, uh, I tell them exactly, OK, you have to do this to make this work. So when they move on to the next level, they have to figure it out themselves. Obviously, I'm there to help them and guide them a little, nudge them. But uh, I'm trying to build their own confidence that they can figure out how to make it work on their own. That, and it must be so rewarding when they are actually making their own, you know, figuring it out and doing it and then telling you we want to make this game or whatever it is that they, you know, they're uh, working with you on. So tell me, talk about level one. What exactly is level one, if you could explain it a little bit? Uh, is this level one is basically on scratch level one, which is basically teaching the concepts that I just explained. So it covers all the basic concepts that they need to be able to start the basic of an algorithm. Uh, and that's basically where I start. Uh, unless kids have already done the basics, then they can skip it. But right. I generally do it to make sure that they have the concept. Because they might have learned to use that. They might know how to use that forever loop or something, but they won't understand the whole concept of what the loop is because they've never actually learned it. So I like to let them understand the basic and there's different type of loops how to use it. So I honestly really do encourage that people who do come to me, kids who do come, do that foundation of course. So their base is strong. Excellent. And what are your future plans uh, with Crack That Code? How do you want to take it forward? Oh, I have so many plans. <laughs> I have so many different ideas. Uh, we, even with the kids, uh, now that I have the foundation course set, I'm now moving on to teaching them Python. And I will move forward to do the mobile app development. And uh, this is actually left for the next question, that, but I am going to move on to others as well. I do plan to create uh, uh, curriculums, so teach women from beginning and adults from beginning to end how to design their own projects and their own programs as well. 
but that's all in the pipeline. I haven't gone to it yet. Uh, but right. I can... and inshallah, good luck, best of luck to you. Uh, tell us about uh, the team that you have, uh, if you work in a team and how that works. Uh, honestly, um, a lot of it I've done a lot of by myself. But uh, to last year, I had a partner with me who was helping me brainstorm. I think teams are really important, especially in this field, because you need someone to bounce ideas off and something you can't think of, the other person might come up with. So I really uh, got a lot of help with working with my partner last year. Uh, I do have uh, my husband, who's my partner, but he runs the business end of it. I have a marketing team, which focuses all on the social media end of things. Uh, and then um, now I'm hiring teachers so that they can be trained and then so I expand that way that I can run more classes if it's not just me doing the marathon. And like you said, you know, teams are working in teams is really important. And that is what we uh, talk about a lot here at LTEC as well. Um, advice to younger girls who want to start something like you did or who want to learn coding or do something, take a similar career path as yours. All, honestly, first of all, I would say that there's a lot of a uh, lot of things online right now. You can learn so many different languages online. There's uh, on, online classes as well. You can go. Uh, I'm planning to start my own classes as well. Uh, and what I would like to say to them is don't let the fear stop you. I mean, the fear is how will I manage? I remember myself having that fear. How am I going to do this? How am I going to run a house? How am I going to take care of my kids and do this work? Once you get over that fear and have faith in yourself, you will find a way. And that is what I learned for myself that I did find a way. I did end up asking people to help me and getting support from in, in Crack That Code. I hired people to do the work that I couldn't get time to. I had people work at home with me to make sure my house was running. So it's uh, being able to ask for help, not trying to do it all by yourself, and not too scary. I think that's a great thing you pointed out that, you know, having faith in yourself and the confidence that, yeah, I can manage, I can do this. Just take the first step and do it. So, it's it's not really it. You find that path afterwards. You're fighting and then you find a way. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to check. We have, mashallah, a lot of people saying hi to you. And hi. Facebook on our Facebook Live. Thank you, everybody, for commenting, and uh, you're getting a lot of best best of luck as well. Uh, now, coming to your message for LTech FICA. Um, honestly, I think this what you guys are doing is amazing. Um, I think giving that platform to get people connected. And honestly, this itself will provide the confidence. Um, like my other people's videos, it will give them the confidence that they can pursue their passions and they can find a way to do it. And uh, what I talked about, you guys are helping them do that. And I think it's beautiful. And uh, I'm really grateful that I got to be part of it. Thank you so much for agreeing to be a part of it and uh, you know sharing uh, your story with us, sharing your struggles with us and everything that you're doing at Crack That Code. Uh, best of luck with whatever you're doing and we'd be happy to be uh, you know featuring you and talking to you in the future as well. And um, uh, we're going to be leaving a link to your page in within the comments of this video. So uh, if you're interested in getting in touch with FICA, that is a way. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much, FICA, for coming. And we'll be back next week with another Sheikh Quarry live sprints. And until then, see you all. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. Bye-bye.